Welcome to Pretty Over 50. I'm Kimberly and I'm really glad you're here. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me today. I'm really happy to have you. And I'm super excited about today's video because we're going to be working with a palette that I have fallen in love with all over again. It is the Tardis Pro Remix. And if you haven't seen this palette, it's absolutely stunning. There's 16 base colors and then another four you see in the round pans along the side. And the colors are incredibly beautiful. So the way that I came across owning this palette was I was living in Montana towards the end of my two year full time travel journey that I just finished up. And I wanted to get to know Glacier National Park, so I was living in a little town called Whitefish, which is right outside the park. So I was doing a lot of hiking, but a bonus to living in Whitefish is that right up the street, there was an Ulta. So for a girl like me, Ulta and hiking, world-class hiking, couldn't get much better. So I was in the Ulta one day and I realized I had a whole bunch of points that I could spend on anything in the store. And I was looking at all the different high-end palettes and I was looking at the Anastasia Sultry palette and just kind of weighing my options and decided that I would go with this Tardis Pro Remix. Now, right after I bought this, a few weeks later, I ended up wrapping up my time in Montana, packing up my car and moving back home to California. So it pretty much got put away for a while. And a couple of days ago, I pulled it out again. I was kind of curious, like, let's see what really this palette is all about. And I started swatching the colors and I was just over the moon with, I think, the sophistication and just the beautiful formulas that this palette has to offer. So I'm really excited today to be putting together a look for you. Now, they have a wide selection of colors in this palette that you can see. And each formula is a little bit different. Some are more shimmery than others. There's only two matte shades and the rest of them have a little bit of either satin, shimmer, or almost a sparkle to them. There are a few shades in this palette that are absolutely standouts for me. And a couple of them are beautiful hues of blue. You can see them swatched here and they're absolutely stunning and I think they could make such an incredibly unique and sophisticated eye look. So the treats in this palette are almost endless. And the side colors right here, there are four down the side and they're really kind of standout formulas and they have a sparkle and a shimmer in them that are very, very unique. Now this one right here looks almost black, but when you really go into it, it's a charcoal with a purple shimmer glitter, which is stunning. And then this one down here on the bottom looks kind of taupey, but it has an iridescence in it that's kind of one of those blue purpley iridescent colors. It's absolutely just gorgeous. So we're gonna have a lot of fun today putting together what I would consider sort of a sophisticated, maybe nighttime look with this Tardis Pro Remix palette. So let's go ahead and get started. My face is all prepped and ready. I've done my serums, my moisturizers, my sunscreens, and I went ahead and did my eyebrows off camera. So I'm just gonna go in with the CoverGirl Lid Lockup um, eyeshadow primer and get that going. I'm gonna go in with this color right here and start defining the crease. The color intensity in this palette is amazing. And you just really don't need much product on your brush to really get a significant amount of shadow on your eyes. So just small little circles and blending that out. This is a beautiful neutral brown that just sets the crease up beautifully. You know, this would make a great, just simple eye look crease color on its own with a, a light shimmer on the lid and just a little bit of highlight underneath the brow. This would be beautiful. I'm gonna go in with a blending brush now and really soften up those edges. These blend beautifully. The formula is really superb. 
So I've got that all blended out. So that crease color is very, very smooth. I'm really excited about the lid color I've chosen for today. It's this very soft, almost sea foamy green color with a little bit of shimmer in it. It just looks gorgeous. And when I swatched it, I was just over the moon. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on my finger and just start tapping that on the lid. Ooh, that is so pretty. That is so pretty and very pigmented. I just did not use very much at all. So pretty. Just bringing it right up to that crease color. I just love the color combinations in this palette. It's just so sophisticated. I'm gonna go back in with my blending brush now and really just smooth out the edges of that crease color and the lid color together. This, it's hard to describe. I'm not sure if you can see it really clearly um, in the video, but the, it's kind of a, a khaki seafoam green color. Just uh, with a little bit of olive in it, it's so, so pretty. Now I'm gonna go in with this kind of khaki green color right here and just hit the outside edges of my eyes. Just tap a little bit in, tap it off my brush and just work it right in that outside edge of my eyelid, kind of up into the crease. It's kind of a dark khaki color, pulling that right down into that lid color and blending it in just a little bit with that crease color. These shadows are so buttery and smooth they're really fun to work with. I'm gonna go back in with the blending brush again and just start working that in place, not really moving it very much. Just working it in place and blending it into that crease color and that lid color in that outside area. These are such beautifully unique colors. You know, I'm really kind of a neutral girl, but every now and then it's really fun to play with a very different and unique color palette, and this certainly is that. Just moving it over a little bit to kind of blend with that crease color, pulling that khaki in. For under the brow bone, I'm going to just tap in a little bit of this very light cream color right here. It's another matte color. And just sweep that under the brow bone real lightly. And then I'm gonna pull just a little bit in towards the dark areas that I seem to get in the inside of my eyes, just to lighten that area up a little bit. It's really fun working with these formulas. It's a beautiful palette. So I'm pretty happy with that eye look right now. Isn't that a fun color combination? I'm really enjoying it. For primer today, I'm going to be using the Catrice Prime and Find. This is a primer that I've just been working with recently. I like it. I don't have a full review on it yet because I'm still in the early stages, but we're gonna go ahead and try it today and see how it works under the foundation. So just a little bit on the back of my hand and go ahead and really just lightly wash that over the skin. It has a really light, smooth, feel to it. Very, it feels uh, real, real refreshing and moisturizing. Right up in between my brows here, I seem to have a little bit of pore, a large pores. And of course, always under my eyes because I want to make sure that my concealer stays set throughout the day. While that primer is drying down. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of Peachy Corrector just to the inside corners of my under eye area. Just a tiny bit to kind of neutralize that purple tone that I seem to get there. This is a Peachy Tone Corrector and it is True Match from L'Oreal. So very light application and I'm just going to gently tap that in and that will be drying down while I put on my foundation. 
For foundation today, I'm going to be using the Chanel Lumiere Velvet. You know, I actually bought this when I was in Cancun. I had flown into Cancun on my way to Tulum, where I lived for four months. So I stopped into a drugstore. I don't, or it was a department store. I don't even remember which one. And I bought this foundation. I don't think I wore it more than three or four times the entire time I was in Tulum. So it didn't get much love there, but I am using it and enjoying it now that I'm back home. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on the back of my hand. You can see not very much. And just start tapping that around my face. For me, it's important that I get the sides of my face too because I have some sunspots in that area. From all my time on the beaches, I'm just going to start patting that out with my beauty sponge. This is a beautiful foundation. It gives a lovely finish and really, really stays. I haven't been using it as much lately as I could have been because I'm kind of in love with the concept of drugstore foundations these days and have been trying a lot to kind of get a feel for what my holy grail foundations are. But this is definitely a gorgeous foundation. See how pretty that finish is? And how easily it blends in. So now that that peachy corrector has a little bit of time to kind of dry down, I'm gonna go in with the Maybelline Age Rewind Eraser. And I've been working with this lately. This is in the highlighter color. And I've been seeing how much um, I enjoy it. And we're going to give it a whirl today. So just tapping on a tiny bit in the areas under my eyes that seem to have coloration issues. I always use my ring finger for this so that I get a very light touch. And I find if I look up while I'm applying my concealer, it seems to really help with the smoothness of the application. This particular concealer has such a cult following. Really, so many people really love it. I've been enjoying working with it. So once I have that concealer all tapped in, I'll go back in with my Beauty Blender and just give it that kind of really soft focus finish that you can't get with just your finger carefully tapping that out. Then pretty quickly after that concealer application is finished, I'll go in with my e.l.f. HD Perfecting Powder. This is not a loose powder, this is actually a compact, and I just sort of lucked into this combination. I'm really liking it for setting my under eye concealer. So I go in with an e.l.f. brush, tap in, tap off the excess, and then very gently lay that underneath the eyes. You don't need very much. Then once I have that powder on, I'll go ahead and just dust off my brush really well and dust away any excess. And then the very last thing is I'll go back in with my beauty sponge again and just tap that powder in very gently. For bronzer today, I'm gonna to go back to my tried and true favorite, my e.l.f. palette. And this thing is getting so much love. I've dropped it on the tile, so I've lost one of the pans. I'm hitting pan on a few of the colors, but you can see that I'm really loving this palette. So in with a big e.l.f. blending brush. I'm just gonna start hitting the outsides of my face. I really um, enjoy this bronzer palette. But I do think I need to try a few more. If you have a favorite bronzer, put it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're using and loving these days. So I'm just going around the edges of my face, onto my cheeks a little bit and down under my chin. I tend to be a little heavy handed, so you can tell me when to stop. And that's looking okay. For blush today, I'm going to be using one of my very favorite palettes. It is the Perfusion Pink Nudes palette. And it has these three blushes. And I think this 
this is a more of a highlighter down here at the bottom, but I use these two in combination and it's such a pretty, pretty look. And you know, these palettes are so inexpensive. I think this palette was maybe $7. So if you haven't tried out the Perfusion palettes, give them a whirl. I think they're really, really a great value and the formulas are wonderful. So I'm just gonna tap into this kind of soft, rosy tone right here. And this one has a little bit of shimmer and just very lightly wash that over the cheeks. Isn't that pretty? It's such a pretty color. I'm really in love with this. This particular formula, um, it has just a little bit of glow, kind of that lit within glow and it stays all day. So I can put this on in the morning and I'll be somewhere and kind of catch myself in the mirror and maybe my lipstick is not as fresh as it used to be, but boy, this blush is still just giving me that glowy look. It's just really, really pretty. So just a soft wash on the cheeks. Then I'm gonna go back in with that large e.l.f. blending brush again and really work it together with that bronzer. So I have a very smooth edge on it. And then I'm gonna go into this little pink color right in the middle, which is really just the sweetest pink. And tap just a little bit on my brush and just give the tiniest bit of extra pink glow on my cheeks there. Isn't that pretty? Kinda of just tops it off a little bit. So back in with my e.l.f. blending brush again and just blend that together. For highlight, I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild Highlighting Powder. I've been using this a lot lately and really enjoy it. Um, I think this is Gold Crown. I'll put the links down below of, of what the name of the product is. So I go in with just this tiny little tapered brush tap it into the product, just get a little bit on my brush, tap it off, and I'll just lightly go over the high points of my face and just a little bit on the cheeks in the front. It's just, isn't that pretty? It just has the softest glow. It has a little bit of gold shimmer in it. A really beautiful highlighter and a great price point. And go back in with the elf brush again. You can see this gets a lot of <laughs> this gets a lot of action. Hmm. And just really smooth that out. To set just my T zone right now, I'm gonna go with the Maybelline Fit Me powder. And I use the color Classic Ivory. It's number 120. And I'll just take a complexion brush. I think this is a real techniques brush and tap it into that powder. This can be used as a setting powder, a finishing powder, or a foundation. Um, it's really quite versatile. So I'll just take a little bit on my brush and just tap it in to the T-zone and kind of just set that area because that's where I tend to get oil. All right, before we do mascaras, I'm going to do a little bit of shadow work, eyeshadow work on the lower lash line. I'm going to go back in to the lower lash line with this kind of dark green khaki color and just tap my brush in real gently and then I'm going to pinch it so it has a, a real narrow hairline and I'm just going to run it underneath the lower lash line on both sides and that's just going to tie in the lower lashes with that upper shadow and just give a real pretty soft look to the color palette that we're using. For tight lining today, I'm gonna to use the Ulta Gel Liner. These are wonderful, they're pencil liners, but boy, they really stay on and they sharpen really well. If you don't have the Ulta sharpener, the Ulta pencil sharpener, you might wanna get it. It's one of the best sharpeners I've used, and I think it's $2 on the Ulta site, so it's really a good value and works really well with these pencils. I'm just gonna go in and tight line and really hit those lashes. That's gonna give our mascara a really nice foundation to start from. For mascara, I'm using the CoverGirl Exhibitionist in black. I've been 
enjoying this mascara. It really, I mean, it's a fan favorite for a lot of people, a holy grail product. It really lengthens and boy, it gives volume and a nice black, black color. I really haven't had much problem with clumping with this mascara, which I love. Isn't that a great lengthening mascara? I'm really loving this eyeshadow look for the spring. It's just such a fresh, fun look. To do my lower lashes, I'm going to use my trick. If you've seen my videos before with the get ready with me, you've seen this. So I take a tissue and I fold it over, get my mascara, get some product on the brush, get that ready, and then I take this tissue and I tuck it right underneath my lower eyelashes. So I can really get the product all over those lashes and not worry about getting it on my skin. I've been doing this since I was a teenager. And it's just something I started and I've continued to do it. So you can see it really gets a lot of product on the lower lashes. And then I can just go in and touch the tips up. Isn't that mascara lengthening and volumizing? It's really a great mascara. For lips today, I'm going to line the lips with the Revlon Rose Lip Liner. This is really one of my go-to lip liners. It works really well with any pinky, rosy color. So I'm just going to smooth that out a little with my fingers so we don't have a real harsh line. Then I'm going to chop that off with the Maybelline Nocturnal Rose lip color. Isn't that pretty? It's just mm, such a gorgeous color. I think it'll go good with this eye look. And just to finish off the face, I'm going to go back in with my e.l.f. HD powder and just kind of buff over the face. I'm going to set it with the Catrice finishing spray. Mmm, it has a, such a nice little florally smell. So here we have our look for today. I think this is such a pretty spring palette. The, the soft greens with the pink lip, I just, I love it. It feels so fresh to me. So we worked with the Tardis Pro Remix palette today. I'm really loving this. And if you decide to give it a try, put a comment down below and let me know how you like it. And of course, for foundation, we use the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet. And then the rest of the skin products came from e.l.f. and Perfusion for our blushes. And I'm really loving this look. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoy these videos, skincare, makeup for the over 50 woman, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you did enjoy this, please give me a thumbs up. That would be wonderful. Again, thank you for joining me in Pretty Over 50. I'm Kimberly, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.